In this video, we are going to connect the view to the view model. So this way we can display properties from the view model and from the models that the view model is using. But first we have to take care of a very important thing. In the last lesson, when I created the player object in the view model, I was going to give myself a million gold and I only typed 100,000. So now we put the extra zero in and my player has a million gold. When we connected the player object, the model, to the view model object, we needed to do a couple things. We needed to go into the player class and set the class and the properties public. And then we needed to go into the view model, the game session class, and put in a using engine.models statement because the player class is in the engine.models namespace. We have to do something similar in order for the view to use the view model, but there's one more step that we need to do. So first let's go into game session and make the class public and make the current player property public. Now when the view model was using the model, they're both in the same project, the engine project. So we only needed to add the using statement the view is in a different project. It's in the WPF UI project. So we need to add a reference. Adding a reference lets one project use files from a different project. So here in the WPF UI project over in the Solution Explorer, we'll right click on reference, select add reference, and we want to have the projects and the solution projects shown. If you have something else, you may have assemblies or browse open. Just click on the triangle next to projects and select solution. And we want the engine project. The UI is going to use the classes from the engine project, so it needs the reference to the engine project. Then click OK. And if we look over here at the WPF UI references, it now has engine included. So WPF UI can use files from the engine project. If we take a look at the game session class, the way we created the player object is in the game session constructor. We instantiated the player object and saved it to a property in the game session class. We're going to do something similar with the view. So far with the main window, the view, we've only looked at the XAML file, but there's also a XAML.cs file. If you look over here in Solution Explorer, mainwindow.xaml is showing underneath it mainwindow.xaml.cs. You may need to click the little triangle to the left of it to see that. If we double click on mainwindow.xaml.cs, this is the code behind page for the view for the XAML file. And it already has a constructor in it. This public main window is the constructor for the main window class. Since we want to use the game session object, from engine.viewmodels, we need to add a using statement here. Using engine.viewmodels. This will let us instantiate a game session object inside this class. Instead of creating a property here to hold the game session object, we're going to create a private variable. You would use a property if some other class was going to use this file, use this class, then the, the property is a way to expose that data. But nothing else should ever use this class, so we don't need to make it a property. We can just make it a private variable. And we do that by putting it inside the class, but outside all the functions. So I'll say private game session underscore game session. And this is how we declare a private variable. You put in the scope, you put in the data type game session, and then you put in the name of the variable. You don't have to name your private variables underscore and then have it uppercase and lowercase like this, but this is a common way a lot of programmers use it. And here inside the constructor for main window, there's already an initialize component function call. This sets up everything for the screen. So we'll say underscore game session equals new game session. Because we have a single equal sign, 
That means get the result of everything over on the right side. So we're going to instantiate our new game session object and put it into the variable on the left side. So when we start up our main window, this will instantiate a new game session. And inside the game session constructor, that will instantiate the new player. And now our view will have a player to work with and a game session to work with. And to make the XAML file know what it's working with, we're going to add another line. It says data context equals underscore game session semicolon. So we're going to instantiate the new game session object, store it in our variable, and then we're going to say that's the data context. So this is what the XAML file, once we start adding labels and controls, is going to use for its values. The data context is a built-in property for the XAML windows. So now we need to start finding a place to put the values on the screen inside the XAML file. Right now when we run the program, our screen looks like this. We have this player data, which, if we look at the XAML, is this label right here. The one at grid row 1 and grid column 0 where it says player data. What we want to do is replace this with these six rows and these two columns. So we can display the name, the class, the hit points, all the player data. The way we're going to do that is by replacing this label that's in row one, column zero, with another grid. So I'll type that and be right back in a second. So before we had this label in row one, column zero, that just said player data with an aquamarine background. And we're replacing it with this grid in row one, column zero, with an aquamarine background. I'll delete the old label. This grid works like all other grids. We have our row definitions here, the six rows for each of the values, and the two columns for each of the values. I'll just left click over here to hide those. Then inside this grid we have labels in each row and each column to show the hard-coded value, and then right now I just have some temporary values in here. Because this grid is inside this grid, so we have our outer grid starting point up here and our and that grid's ending point down here this grid fits inside the larger one that's a common way of doing layouts you do grids inside grids you could get fancier and use other controls but we're going to use this for right now and if we run this this is what the screen looks like we have the large outer grid for all the screen layout for the whole screen. And then we've got this inner grid here for the player data. Now we need to connect this up to the player object so we show actual values in here instead of the hard-coded values I typed in. Before we do that, let's go into the game session and add some values to those other properties. I'll set the current player character class to fighter and set the current player hit points to 10, the current player experience points we'll say is 0 since it's a new player, and the current player level will be 1. So now when we actually display the data we'll have some values to display. And in order to display the data in the view in the XAML file, we use something called data binding. Here the content right now for the name is just the words name value. We're going to bind this to the name property of the current player. And the way you do that is you set the content equal to open curly brace and then type in binding space and this is where the data context comes into use. The main window XAML file has the data context of a game session object. So this is where we're going to connect to the game session object. And we're going to say current player dot name. So now when we run this and it looks for the content, it's going to look at the data context 
which is the game session object, look at the current player property, and then look at the name property of the current player. And if this all works, when we click start to run this, we now actually see the current player name. And we'll do the same thing for all the other values. It will just be binding to the current player dot character class dot hit points and so on. I'll type those in real quick. So now we should display all the properties, the name, character class, hit points, gold, experience points, and level when we run the program. I'll click start and there it all is. So now the view is binding to the game session object and to the properties in there. So now the view can display data from the view model or from the models inside the view model on the screen. And we'll use this pattern for most of the rest of our code. When we want to display the current location data, we're going to have a current location property in the view model that will hold a location model object and we'll display the location name, the location graphic, things like that. I'll include a link in the description so you can go to a page with all the source code. And if you have any questions, you can leave a comment there and I'll answer those. And I should be getting these videos out more quickly. The last few weeks I just started a new job, so things have been a little crazy. But I think things are starting to get normal now, so I can get the videos out more often. Thanks for watching.